Hi, today we're going to be reviewing this 6 port USB desktop charger from Anglink. They sent this to me free of charge for review, but you can buy this from Amazon for around £14. And this particular model has four USB ports, uh, an additional USB port with Qualcomm Ch Quick Charge 2, and then there's also a USB Type-C connector as well for charging some of the newer phones. And this is quite a powerful model, so it suggests it can uh, supply up to 50 watts of charging, so we'll test that in a bit. Um, and other than that, uh, I think it's fairly standard, so it looks like it's just mains powered. Uh, yeah, the six USB ports, uh, 50 watts, and universal mains input. So let's have a look inside the box. We've got the USB charger itself, and a mains cable. And this looks fairly reasonable. And this seems to be a fairly reasonably designed uh, USB charger. And quite a nice form factor, so it's designed for desktop use. Uh, I'm not really sure whether I've got uh, six pieces of equipment that need charging, but certainly you can use this just to power USB operated equipment, such as the uh, clock which I built the other week. Uh, on one side we've got the mains inlet here, um, the ratings on here, and then the certifications. And then on the other side, uh, we've just got the six USB ports. It looks like there might be a little LED uh, just in a little opening here, but other than that, there's nothing else on the casework. So let's just uh, power up the device. So that's powered on now. And yeah, we've got a blue LED in there. And we can use the uh, YZX Studio USB uh, tester just to check the output. And that's saying about 5.222 volts. And I happen to have a phone which is quick charge compatible, which is one of the reasons I was quite interested in reviewing this item, because it's really quite incredible the rate at which it charges um, your phone. So if you forget to charge it one morning and you're about to go out, it can probably uh, charge up to about 70% in 20 or 25 minutes. So um, really quite impressive. It's probably not all that great for the battery, but it, the, this phone at least doesn't seem to get too warm while it's charging. Uh, so what we'll do first is just try it charging one of the normal USB ports and I think these are intelligent USB ports so they'll try and negotiate the fastest charging speed on the 5 volt um, supply. So we'll plug in this uh, YZX Studio uh, USB analyzer and I think it's quick charge compatible so uh, we should be able to use it in the other port as well but uh, if not it might go bang but we'll, we'll see. So yeah, you can see no current being drawn. Let me plug in the phone. And yeah, it's drawing um, drawing between uh, 1 and 2 amps there at 5 volts. So that's good. Uh, that's the correct way to charge one of these phones from a standard uh, 5 volt supply. And uh, now we'll try the quick charge port. I think... Um, this one supports 9 volt charging, I don't think it does the higher voltage, so uh, first of all it should just read 5 volts like the other ports, and then when it negotiates and realises this is a quick charge compatible device we should see the voltage jump up. So let's plug this in. And there we go, it's now at 9 volts at 1.62 amps, so that's 15 watts charging which is uh, you know quite a good uh, charging rate to get the battery on the phone uh, full in no time. So that seems to work correctly as a standard charger uh, but I am interested to test the claim that this is suitable for charging up to 50 watts of um, devices so what we'll do now is we'll hook up a load to it and see if it really does um, supply 50 watts. So here's the test setup for checking the load on this device. So we've got the charger itself. We've got uh, electronic load, uh, which I borrowed from my friend. I highly recommend you view his channel and website. And then I've got the Variac as well, um, because this does say it's suitable for universal input voltage. So we'll test it at uh, 110 volts and also 240 volts. And then if we pan over to the other area of the bench, so on the Fluke 289 we've got the mains voltage being supplied to the power supply and then on the 6.5 digit meter here we've got the output from the charger directly on one of the ports of the USB and then on the power meter here we've got the output voltage being measured at the jacks here, the current being drawn and the power being drawn. Um, 
So we've got this meter here because there's uh, a little bit of cable here. So we're going to see some voltage drop. We'll probably see the output voltage drop on the power meter, uh, but we probably won't see it drop until the DC to DC uh, until the flyback converter starts uh, crapping out because we're drawing too much current. And then I'm just using the power supply here to adjust the DC load. So I'm just going to turn on the fan on the load because it's uh, going to dissipate quite a bit of heat. Right, so everything's now set up. So we can start putting a load on the charger. So there we've got about 10 watts being drawn. Uh, that's about 2 amps. And we can see the output's still stable at 5 volts. So let's increase it some more. And there's 30 watts, the output's still stable at 5 volts. We're now drawing 8 amps, that's 34 watts. The voltage at the, out, at the input to the terminals here has dropped a little bit, so um, uh, we're probably not going to be able to see 50 watts on here, although we'll probably see the 10 amps being drawn here. The output's still stable. And there's 10 amps being drawn, 40 watts, uh, but obviously the voltage here has dropped to 4 volts. And um, we're just slightly starting to see the voltage drop here. And the charge is not really warm at all. We'll just see if we can take it any further. 11 amps. And then it seems to crap out about 11 amps. So now what it's doing is thinking it's overloaded. So you can just see the voltages jump, uh, jumping all over the place as it's trying to recover. But uh, yeah, that seems to be working correctly. We can definitely draw 10 amps from there, uh, which at the terminals is obviously uh, 50 watts um, because we were seeing 5 volts still at the terminals. So it certainly is able to provide the 50 watts as claimed. We'll also just do the same test at low line voltage. So uh, we'll take this down to 110 volts. There we go. And we'll just try uh, drawing the same current again. So 10 amps, no problem. And then it stops working at about 11 amps. So for less than £15, I certainly think this is uh, quite a good buy. I'd normally be guilty of purchasing the branded equipment. So for my Samsung phone, I'd normally buy a Samsung charger. You generally uh, guaranteed good reliability from them and obviously the proper certifications uh, but this one certainly seems to live up to its claims uh, I have no reason to doubt that um, it's not compliant with all of the certifications marked on the back so um, I do believe it's CE marked and everything and it seems like it's uh, well designed I can't seem to get the case open so um, obviously I can't tell you the details of the circuitry inside but it does seem to be uh, you know, a well-designed unit, nice form factor, quite portable, so you can take it with you if you go on holiday, and obviously um, it has the universal input, so if you take it on holiday, you can just take an appropriate lead, um, and then you can uh, charge yours and your family's devices all at the same time. So I'll put the link down below for where you can buy this, um, and if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up, and thanks for watching.